Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges, joining us today, NCAA All-American for the University of Georgia, recently World Championships medalist for Canada. Today, we're sitting down with Javier Acevedo. How is the jet lag treating you so far, Javi? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's hitting me pretty hard right now. Quite honestly, I think last night I got like three different segments of three hours sleep, so not ideal. But we move forward, you know. So <laughs> hopefully tonight I'll sleep well. Do you do you have a a system at all for for getting back onto your normal schedule once you have a big travel like that? Um, I mean, just probably just to try to stay up as long as I can, um, and not try to take naps during the day. Um, I think that's like the best way to do it, but there's, it's never ideal because like, you just want to go to sleep as soon as you can. And like yesterday, midday was around probably like 4am in the morning in, in technically in Melbourne time. So it was pretty rough, but we made it. And, you know, hope, like I said, hopefully tonight and throughout the week, it'll only get better. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so going the other way, let's. I want to dive into your short course worlds uh, in Melbourne. Going the other way, did you have any trouble adjusting to the time change? Yeah. No, I didn't really have too much trouble. So me and Finley actually <laughs> we got sent uh, earlier to the Gold Coast to go train out for two weeks with uh, Bully and the Bullies group um, on the Gold Coast. So with Griffith, um, and so that was really fun because um, we got to just get acclimatized and adjusted to that training. And just like the time. So we definitely had a little bit of an advantage rather than the rest of the Canadians who came within like the last like three or four days before the meet started. So, yeah. Yeah. And not, not that, I mean, it seemed like Canada had a really great meet all around, but it seemed like you two particularly also had great meets. Um, what was training with, uh, with Michael Bull like at Griffith? I mean, that's, that's a star studded group right there. Yeah. It was actually a lot of fun. So, um, <laughs> For, for me and Finley, it was a great opportunity to to get used to racing like some older people. I think with High Performance Center here in Ontario, uh, we've lost a lot of people, quite honestly, and um, it's more of a younger group. Um, so to be out there training with Emma McKeon and Cody Simpson and uh, for me, like Josh Edward Smith, um, was really good. And, and I think Finley and I both benefited a lot from that kind of stuff. So um, it's a tough group. The practices were a little different. The weather, the first week we were there was not what we would have expected. It was a little rainy, uh, but it was good. And it, we did a lot of long course. So I also feel like long course for me helps me to make short course just feel a lot easier. So, yeah. So how do you like, were you doing Michael Bowles workouts? Were you doing your own coaches workouts? Like, how do you do that? How do you do a little camp like that two weeks before a major world championships when you're trying to swim at your best? Yeah. So our coach, Ryan, uh, Ryan <laughs> let, he kind of, I guess, had talked to Michael Bull about us coming over beforehand. And I think our programs are very similar in what we do for training. So Ryan was very comfortable with kind of just letting us do Michael Bull's practices um, and whatever he had written for us. So Finley did a lot of what like Clyde Lewis was doing and more like the IM based practices. Whereas I would join the sprint group, which was more Emma McKeon, Cody Simpson um, and their workouts. Gotcha. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that seems like a really cool experience. And then heading into the meet, once you link up with, with the rest of team Canada, um, did you have any goals personally for yourself heading into this meet? Um, I did. I think after the world cup this past fall, I think I had a lot of goals that I had in mind. Uh, ultimately I didn't reach all of them, but I think it just sets me up, um, really well for long course. And I've been on this really hot streak, um, since May, honestly. So I just kept that going and, um, it really helped me prepare, um, for Melbourne and, and just really get adjusted to, um, the racing that I knew I was going to have to do because we, there was a lot of relays at short course. So, um, I knew getting used to all the racing and, and the world cups was going to help me for Melbourne as well. So, yeah. Uh, so heading into the meet, how, how would you dissect it, you know, from start to finish? Um, would you say there was a portion of the meet that, that went better for you or, or a portion where you, you kind of had a dip and then came back at all? Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, day one was kind of a disaster in my opinion. 
Um, I finished, I think, 17th or 18th in the 100 back. I was 50.9. Um, and then I signed the 2IM right after and was like 154, which I also did not foresee. I wanted to go faster. Um, so that was not really that good. But then I bounced back with a nice relay at night. And I think I've just gone through it for my career that – Basically, I know how to like bounce back from bad races. And so after that, I got into more relays and I started swimming well, started doing some breaststroke because, you know, that's what I am nowadays. I'm a breaststroker for short course swimming. Jack Bowerly changed me into a breaststroker and then David Marsh continued that I sell. And now all of a sudden, Canada's using me as a breaststroker. So, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and then just the middle of the meet and, and that kind of segment and leading up to the 100 IM and, and meddling with Finley was super awesome. And, and then, it went really well. And then the last day, again, wasn't ideal. I got this ball up on 200 back, which it was fine. It's whatever happens, you know? Um, and then the medley again, uh, the four by 100 medley, just to cap that off with the four guys, Finley doing backstroke, the breast, me, Ilya on fly, who had an incredible last day. And then freestyle with Ruslan, who had a great uh, 100 free at the end. So that was nice. Uh, what did you get DQ'd for in the 200 backstroke? Uh, I was past 15. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to criticize anyone, but obviously this meet, there's a lot of people that I would watch and be like, ah, it's dicey. And I didn't think I was, but you know, it is what it is. I'm never going to complain. Like, you know, I was happy with the time and prelims and I was happy racing uh, Shane and Luke Greenbank. So, I mean, I, I can't complain about it, even if I got disqualified. Gotcha. Uh, I am with you there. I, I think there are some <laughs> swims, but yeah. it's like, I don't know. There looks like they're pushing it, but yeah, I, I guess it is what it is at this point. Um, it's so going to that hundred IM, obviously it's, it's an event that's very specific to short course meters. Um, what is your relationship with that event? Like when you get those opportunities to swim it? Yeah, I think just the opportunity to do hundred IM, um, for years, I think like I knew that I was going to be always like decent at it. Cause I know I had a good backstroke i had a decent freestyle and i was i'm very good at my pull-ups with breaststroke and that's why i've been able to translate my breaststroke into short course really well so it's all about um for me just making sure that my fly was there and not losing too much behind the guys who like thomas tracone and um and finley who are really good flyers um in their own in the im and so for me just trying not to lose as much momentum and i think again a lot of the im training i've done um with high performance and even with georgia was tailored for me to be racing guys who are really good at flying. I mean, Luca would always crush me in, in sprint fly. And, and so would like Chase or now even like Wesley, uh, Ng, um, he's pretty good at fly as well on Georgia. So, uh, even this fall, I had a great opportunity to travel to the States and train with Tennessee and NC state for a little bit. And so that even helped me get used to even more short course stuff. You've just been all over. Uh, let's, let's dive into that a little, a little. Tennessee and NC State. Uh, you, you you mentioned you had the opportunity. What what led to that? Was that just because you were in the states for the World Cup? And, and you know how did that go? So yeah, um, after Commonwealth Games, I uh, I was like, man, I really want to like simulate ISL and kind of being able to travel and and just be away for a little bit. And so I wanted to travel to Tennessee to go visit my friend Tessa. Um, and so I spent a week in Knoxville um, with Matt uh, Credit and, and their group. Um, I actually swam in the distance group, which I needed to do because I needed my, I needed to get in shape really quick because I was going to swim Berlin. So, <laughs> um, that was really good. Like, I mean, it was, it was a good time. I went to the Florida game, Florida, Tennessee game. I wish I went to the Bama game with Tennessee. That would have been much more fun. Um, but, but it was a lot of fun and I, it was really good for my training. And then I went to NC state the week after, um, I drove, so I drove all the way from Toronto to Tennessee and then Tennessee to Georgia for like two days and then Georgia to um, NC State. And so I trained with uh, their sprint group and Braden um, was an awesome coach. And they really helped me with my backstroke and just training with Coleman and Casper for those two days. Or the, it was four weeks, it was four days, what am I talking about? Uh, four days that, that week in uh, <laughs> late September was really fun. And it, it really got me going. And, and I love those boys so much. Like Casper is like one of my best friends and Coleman is an incredible man as well. So like just to be able to train with them is, a, is great. And then seeing the intensity that they have at that group, it was, it's awesome. I can see why they're a really, really well, well filled program. Uh, so what do you feel like you picked up uh, about backstroke from Coleman and Casper and Braden? Yeah. 
Yeah. So I think one of the things I can't remember one, of, I think it's like a volunteer assistant who just joined uh, NC State's staff uh, from UNC. I can't remember his name, but he really helped me with my technique um, with my kicking and backstroke and just trying to be more balanced. Um, and because he said that Coleman, when his, he did his world record swim, you could see that he was very balanced in his kick and that kept him higher up in the water. And so for me, I was always like, <laughs> I was in very balanced. So one leg would be very close to the surface, whereas one leg would drop and that would cause drag. So I got, I got that advice and I even learned a little bit from uh, Coleman from that. And so just being able to translate that really helped for Berlin and really helped for Toronto and Indy and even just a short course. So I hope they'll obviously translate at the long course, because that would make it a lot easier. Uh, so you mentioned you've been on this hot streak since May, which, which I've certainly noticed just looking at results from meets, you know, you, you won, I think it was four medals at Commonwealth. Uh, yeah, you, four four medals at Commonwealth Games. You had a great World Cup. Uh, you swam really well at this short course Worlds. What do you attribute that to? You know what? In in your own words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think <laughs> I, I it was really hard for me to adjust coming back to Canada um, from the states. Um, I had spent so much time in Georgia with so many of my friends and and the coaching staff and. I think I kind of lost um, my kind of strive and like for just pure swimming. And I wanted to get back to just, I need to get focused to just swimming. And so when I got back from Georgia um, in May of 2021, before Olympic trials, because I had to quarantine for a couple of weeks, um, I was kind of training on my own, whatever. And then before ISL, I tried to join the high performance group here and Ben Tidley didn't let me into the group, which kind of sucked. Um, so I actually got rejected from here. So I actually had to train on my own until 2022, basically. Um, and then in April, I got let into High Performance Center once Ben was let go. Um, so Ryan let me into the group. Um, and ever since, like being into the group, it's even even now, even when it's younger and, and a lot has changed, I just really like the coaching. And I really like the practices that we do. I think it's much more beneficial for my races specifically. I love Jack. I love what I did at Georgia, but I think at the same time I needed a change. And I think I got stuck a little bit and my results showed that I got a little bit stuck at some points. So coming back and racing with Josh Leando, Yuri Kissel, Finley um, has really helped me. And even this, this fall, like being with Finley, it's been, it's been a lot of fun and, and we're both benefiting from it. It certainly seems like it, you know, especially given that, uh, that two, three finish in the hundred iron podium, um, was, was there a specific reason Ben didn't let you in to the high performance group? Yeah, I, to be honest with you, I don't know, it was like a scoop, but like, I, but like, it was just more, so I texted him, um, and he just like genuinely just never answered and didn't let me into the group. And it was like, kind of like, I felt like I was like getting just left out and, like, again, I made the Olympics and I know I didn't like, I kind of felt like I didn't earn my spot. Like, yes, I finished fourth, but Brent didn't swim the final and Yuri got hurt right before the final. So I finished technically <laughs> fourth, but I know I maybe wouldn't have earned my spot the right way that I would have wanted to. But at the same time, I don't know why I was kind of more so just like he didn't answer me and I never got let in. And so, again, luckily, like. I got let in in April after trials and my performances there with my uh, my old coach, Andrew Miller. Um, but yeah, I like got into the High Performance Center and, and it was really good. So yeah. Nice. And um, yeah, can you go into just a little more depth as to what has been working for you about this environment right now? You know, training with Finley, doing the type of training you've done, um, especially, especially this fall and this winter. Yeah. I mean, with Finley, it's, I try to help him do some I am. Um, mainly we do most of them, all the mornings are pretty much all kind of like aerobic or kind of like skill-based practices. And then the afternoons um, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday um, are all kind of um, quality sets. So I think for us, it's kind of like <clears throat> our races. So especially this fall, Mondays would be, Monday nights, our quality session would be mostly I am work. So we would both benefit from doing 2 IM or one, even 100 IM work. And then Wednesday would be more like 200 work. And then Fridays would be more 100 slash like even 50 work. So um, that's been really like beneficial. And even in long course training this past uh, summer, it was kind of the same. Uh, even though it was more long course on those, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it was still based similar. Like, so like I would train for like the 200 free, the 100 free and the 100 back. So 
<clears throat> you mentioned kind of your your areas of strength and weakness in terms of medley. I'm kind of curious, what are what are Finley's? Yeah, Finley. I mean, Finley is honestly one of the best like I am trainers I've ever seen in my life. Um, he is so talented and he works so hard and he's so dedicated. Um, I actually really respect that because I came from the States where I think it, I honestly like a lot of the training is like, you know, it, it's a college life, you know, it's a little different. Whereas he's lived pretty much all professional. So he's very focused. And I think his weakest part is probably his, like his backstroke, but being with him, I know that he's, he knows that if I can keep up with Javi or even beat Javi during practice in backstroke, I can put the rest of the three, all four strokes together because he is an awesome flyer. He's he made uh, the team in the hundred fly for worlds. He's a pretty good breaststroker, um, and he's an amazing freestyler as well. So like he just needed that backstroke, and I even think he found that this short course, that short course worlds, he put it all together to win bronze in the hundred in the hundred I am obviously, and to in the two hundred I am, which I don't even think like maybe he didn't expect it. I don't know, but um, but I know that it's been really beneficial for him. Nice. Uh, yeah, it, it sounds like it's been a good, good deal for both of you guys. Um, and so is there any, do you think you'll stay in Toronto through, I don't know, through, are you shooting for 2024? Yeah. Um, honestly, I've kind of told a lot of people this, that, uh, because after I made the team in 2021 for the Olympics, I kind of went into the mindset of. I'll just be done when I figure it out. You know, I, I, so I thought I was going to be done after ISL and then that didn't happen. And then I thought I was going to be done if I didn't make the team in trials and then I made the team. So I've just kind of continued like um, just having this mindset of let's just take advantage of each month. You know, we go day by day and then we see what happens. So right now I'm definitely swimming at least until Pan Am games next year in Chile because my family's from Chile. So I'd really love to, to represent Canada at like kind of, where my fam- well, a lot of my family still lives in Chile. So I would love to do that. Um, and then who knows after that? I mean, it's only another six months or whatever it is. So again, and Canada is, the men's team is only getting stronger right now, you know? And I, and I recognize that we have a very good shot at doing something very special. Um, and this long course season, it starts, you know, it's, it's about qualifying that relay right off the bat. Let's get top three. Right. And I think that's not an unrealistic goal for us, especially Josh's, only getting better in the States and I'm only getting better here. Finley's getting better. Ruslan and Ohio state it, and Ilya, you know, you need more than four guys. It's just a, a fact. You need more than four guys in a relay. And I think um, we're only getting stronger. And it's, I've told John Atkinson, our, our high performance director, like, you know, in 20, when I first like started really getting into swimming, like in 2015 or 14, um, our trials, we never didn't have anyone under 50 seconds and under free. And now all of a sudden, seven years later or eight years later, we have a whole heat of guys who are almost on the cusp of 48s, you know? So it's, it's really cool to see that. No kidding. Uh, I, at some point on one of our podcasts, um, I, I said that you guys had a, had a very legitimate metal chance in the four by one free at, in Paris. And I stand by it, especially after hearing that. Uh, so, I mean, how has that motivated you? Obviously, as you said, you're taking it mo- kind of month to month or at least until the Pan Am games. Um, you're not totally like locked into anything, which I totally get. I mean, being a pro athlete is is a lot and it's really hard and you can't really move on with the next step of your life necessarily. Um, but how has the the growth of the Canadian men's team helped keep you in the sport? Oh, it's for sure keeping me in the sport a lot longer. Um, again, I I always knew that I was going to swim past university. I just didn't know how much longer. And to know that our men's team is only improving more and more. I mean, having Ilya come in and doing such and doing something that we've never seen before from a junior swimmer, and he's only going to get better. And, you know, Finley, again, he's only getting better right now. And, and the fact that we have all these guys, veterans and just rookies, like continually improving and improving the depth. I think that's the thing is like, why are the Americans and the Aussies so good in the in this freestyles, right? Because they have heats and loads of people who are competing against each other to get better and better and better. And that's why you see the B final, at, you know, nationals with guys who are going 48 or 49 low. And 
now we're seeing that like someone who is very under the radar, who's improved a lot is Stephen Calkins. He was a 48 in Commonwealth games. He retired after like all of a sudden for like a, a week or something like that. And then came back when he got selected and still went a 48 this past uh, summer. So it's just like even that knowing that he can even continually improve and make that depth a little bit better and a little bit stronger that we don't have to use Josh in a prelim swim in, in Paris just helps our, our chances for a medal because you obviously need someone who's fresh. And I think that's, that's what we've always had to say. Stephen Calkins. <laughs> Look at that guy. Uh, yeah. I mean, geez, no kidding. Um, sorry. I'm looking at like the results right now and that's really impressive. Um, and just to give our viewers or listeners some, some context. So you guys at Commonwealth games were three thirteen zero. Liendo was 48, three, Ruslan was 48-1, Finley was 48-8, and you were 47-7. Yep. Which, uh, I mean, that's a stout relay. And you guys were bronze there next to Australia and England. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's exciting. It's exciting to see you guys on the rise. Um, And it's it's exciting to have another major player in that relay because I think for so long it's kind of only been a few teams. so your role on Team Canada, I mean, you've kind of been the Swiss Army knife. Like you said, for every team you've been on, for Georgia, for the LA Current, uh, for and now for Team Canada, <clears throat> do you do you like that role? Have you learned to embrace that role? Are you trying to more solidify yourself as in one or two events, or do you kind of like having that versatility to to be called up whenever you know in whatever they need you? Yeah, I, I, I genuinely like being versatile. I think that's also why I committed to Georgia. I knew that at Georgia, we train all the strokes. We do, uh, obviously, flyback breast free. We, they we're renowned for IM. And so I love that versatility. And I never wanted to be the type of person who just fo- solely focused on sprint free or sprint back or whatever. And maybe that led to some, like, you know, regression in my backstroke. But at the same time, it helped us get fourth at my senior year in CAAs. And I think the men's team was so happy because we never achieved that. It was only the second time ever we got a trophy. Um, I think 1998 was the last time. And I remember crying and seeing all the boys and, and Jack being so happy. So it was a good kind of send off for that senior class. Um, but even now, like, I mean, being that versatile guy at short course, like, especially in short course, I, I think in long course, I get down to only like freestyle and backstroke, but in short course, I actually really love it. And again, David Marsh trusted me on LA current to, to just throw me in breaststroke. All of a sudden I was doing hundred breaststrokes, you know, and like there's Ryan Murphy leading us off and there's Javier Acevedo just doing breaststroke, but like in the middle of Ryan and Tom Shields, you know, it's like, what, what, on what planet was that ever going to happen? So um, it was pretty cool. And I think I really love that role. And I think as we get closer to Paris, I will have to like get closer to just doing like freestyle and backstroke. But and in long course, I don't usually do the two I am, but I maybe do. Who knows? But um, I just I do like throwing some, <laughs> some uh, other strokes in there. So um, let's let's say hypothetically, because I know you're not you're not 100 percent for Paris, but, you know, long course, what would those focus ev- events be for you? Would it be 100 free, 100 back, 200 back? Yeah, I think right now my focus is probably 200 free, 200 free, and the 100 back. Um, now, Ryan might have other ideas, but I think that's kind of where I'm leaning towards. I think last year or this past summer, obviously the 100 free for the relay got down to 47.7. Um, and that was racing. Tom Dean, went like 46, and Kyle, who went 46, you know, like, <laughs> so that was pretty good. And then as well, like me in doing the 200 free, like I know I might not do it individually, but again, Team Canada trusts me on the relay to throw me in there because at Commonwealth, I went 146. That was the first time a Canadian has been under 147 since the super suits. So again, and even like this past, <laughs> even after Finley and I medaled in 100 IM, we swam the four by two and I was 142 two, taking it out in like 22 six, which is insane. But, um, <laughs> but that's the way I have to swim it. Um, but just those events, like <laughs> making sure that those relays get qualified is super important to us. And I think they even said it themselves, like a lot of the the staff, it's like, even if the relays, we, even if the four by two, for instance, is not going to be a metal shine in 2024, I think that's realistic to say that it's about getting that there. And so that we can bring more staff and bring more people so that they can assist us. You know, we can bring more massage therapists or other people to assist us in 
like the conditioning before the meet, right? So I think that's kind of also why we need to be able to swim a lot, like all the relays and not just, okay, we're only just striving for the four by one. Makes total sense. Uh, yeah. And thank you for, for breaking that down. Cause yeah, that's again, that's kind of the behind the scenes thing that you wouldn't have thought of, but uh, yeah, it's like when you, when you put it like that, yeah, you want more staff. Yeah. You want, and it's also seems like a culture thing. You want to be able to swim that relay because maybe in 28, you have all these up and coming kids who have seen the relay be in the final before, but this time they want to go for a medal. Right. Right. And I think that's what we like. <laughs> We saw, I mean, and even in 20, 2016, it was really cool seeing, you know, Santo, you know, multi, multi-country man, um, Yuri, I think Evan, Ben Morker and Marcus, they just made the final and they were eight. And I think that really set us up for that fourth place, bringing Brent back. Cause you know, Brent probably saw that and was really motivated to, you know, A, make a comeback and B, you know, be on a team that could compete. And I think, you know, seeing Josh, Yuri, again, Yuri threw down a 47-0 on that relay. Um, and then you had Marcus, who we just missed that podium. You know, it makes us, you know, like I like you said, like what keeps me motivated? Seeing that fourth place and knowing that we're only one spot or honestly, we're not that far off from first. You know, who knows? Caleb's not there right now. You know, Italy might be getting a little older. I'm just being honest. Like, you know, Italy's getting a little older and – the Australians, you know, they're good, but you know, you never know what happens in relays. Right. So I think, um, that's what really motivates me. And I think that's what really keeps me going to know that there's an opportunity for something that we've never done in Canadian swimming. I like the way you think, man, <laughs> that's, that's the kind of thinking I, I think swimming needs. Um, but I, so it's, that it's awesome talking to you about that. Uh, so in your immediate future, you know, your home now, um, what do the holidays look like and, and what does racing for you look like over the next couple months? Yeah. So the holidays, I think, well, right now, actually, we're about to do a double. I, I don't know why Ryan <laughs> did a double because I am so exhausted. sorry, but, um, the holidays, we're just going to go singles, um, which is nice. It's not going to be too heavy. I think Ryan just said it's more like kind of aerobic training, nothing too strenuous. Um, and then we're going to go to the Knoxville pro swim. And then we're going to have two weeks in Florida training camp, I think. And then we think we're doing a meet in February and then two weeks in Florida again, and then preparing for trials in April. So that'll be good. Nice. Um, well, Javi, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat. Uh, any parting thoughts for our audience before we sign off today? Uh, nothing really. Just, you know, uh, I love being on the podcast. I love sharing my thoughts. You know, I, I love, I love swimming a lot. So it's really cool to like share that perspective of what's been going on in Canadian swimming. Cause I think a lot of people just hear say it's like hearsay. So just being able to hear it directly, honestly, and I'm very honest and open, like really. So, you know, anyone can ask me anything and I'll, and I'll just answer, but, uh, but yeah, so I love this. So thank you for inviting me. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.